Welcome, welcome, welcome to Romance Book Monsters. It's your girl, Lollipop, with my co-host, Kitty Boom. Hello, everyone. And today we are doing a February book haul. So I'm super excited because it's books. It's the month of love. So there's got, got to be lots going on, but we're going to keep it keep it um, short this time. We're each going to share with you three of our books that we are very much looking forward to reading in the month of February. And, um, you know, if there's any other books coming out, definitely link us in the comments. We are always looking for new authors and um, new books to check out. So I'm going to kick off with my first book I'm looking forward to is by an author that we have talked about before on this very, very show is um, Kristen Ashley. She has a new MC line opening up called um, the Wild West MC series. So book one comes out on February 2nd and it's called Still Standing. So obviously if you have read Kristen Ashley before you've read her Chaos MC series, which we wholeheartedly love, both um, Kitty Boom and I are huge fans. And this particular series starts off, we have of course our our girl here, Clara, who is, you know, she's hit rock bottom. She's hiding her car from the repo man. She's got $2 left in her bank account. And right now, the only job she can get is delivering messages for a criminal. Well, whoo So anyway, she walks up into the headquarters of the Aces High MC to deliver a message. And guess what? The president was like, that's my girl right there. So now, of course, you know, after she had done sworn off men, because one got her in the predicament she's in now. Well, things about to go down because, you know, West Hardy, a.k.a. Buck, is uh, definitely about to get his girl. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, the great thing about this is we will also get a few little tidbits from the different MC series lines that Kristen Ashley has. So we will see some of the chaos people in there and the women who love them. So I'm really excited about that. So Kitty Boom, what's your first book that you're really looking forward to reading? Uh, the first book that I'm really looking forward to was released about two weeks ago. It's a C. Bowerman book. So, you know, that's another like shared favorite of ours. Uh, this book, I think last month we did a review on Hank's book by C. Bowerman. So this book is Racing and Eliza. Uh, it's the beginning of a new line, and Eliza is Hank's sister. So it's continuing on from there. And so Rayson Harper is like a mechanic, and he's like all about family, and he's trying to entangle himself from this whack job girlfriend that he has. So he's like giving up on love, and he has this conversation with Eliza while buying a book in a bookstore, and it's like an instant like. And so they kind of go on from there trying to maneuver each other. I'm all about the love in the bookstore. Right? I miss our Borders Day. I so miss Borders. What are Seattle's best hot chocolate and our chocolate chip cookies and a great yeah. romance novel? Those were the days. We're aging ourselves here, but. <laughs> so tell me more about this book. I'm ready. So, yeah, the girlfriend's like a supposed whack job. You will see, I think we're supposed to like see some cameos from like her other books because he works for a mechanic shop of the motorcycle line that she also writes. So it's really like a mixture of all of her lines in this one line. And this is called the, the Rojo, Texas line. Oh, I'm excited. I'm excited. Yeah, I'm you very know, Hank, excited. Hank is my boo thing. Hank is my show. Oh, yes, we love Hank. Love Hank. <laughs> So hopefully racing is just as good as Hank was. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. So my next book, <clears throat> which I am so looking forward to. And yes, my first two books are both MC books. I love a good MC book. <clears throat> Reckless Road, which is torpedo book number five by Christian Feehan. Let me tell you, Christine Feehan. I have not read... Ooh, it had been years since I read a Christine Feehan book until I discovered this MC line. It was her first MC line. And Christine, girl, you put your foot in this series, man. It has yes, me she did. on high highs and low lows. I'm like, oh, my God, the backstory, the world. This is 
everything. And I am ready for player story. And let me tell you, it's been rough for these guys and gals. They have had a rough time. But I am here. I love each and every one of them and all their quirks. I'm really looking for the storytelling that she has thrown. Now, I don't even want to talk too much about it because you need to read every book in this line before you hit Reckless Road. But when you do, whew, I'm telling you, your, your heart, man, this series, this series really and truly has me on, like be at the edge of my seat trying to figure out what's going to happen next. And the women that she has paired these guys with, A1. A1. Yes, before I start talking about my next book, I definitely can second that for everything you said about the Christine Feehan motorcycle line. I sit there and I'm reading and be like, I'm ready to ride out and get revenge with you. <laughs> for Because like, when I think about it, all the Christine Feehan books I've read are either her shifter line or her historical romance line um, mm -hmm. under her other pseudo name. So I was not prepared for the quality of storytelling for the MC line. Like I was right. shooketh for the dark and grit because I have never read dark and grit from Christine and I was not ready. Before, what was that like Leopard's Prey or Leopard's Fury that she did with her Leopard line? That was very dark and gritty. I don't remember if I wrote, read the that. old book is like years, years old. I may have to go and pull it out from somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I might have read it and forgot. I mean, I read so you many read books it sometimes. I read it. <laughs> okay, well, see, then I did read it. But but yeah. listen, I, I yes, that book might have been dark, but was it Torpedo Ink Dark? Close. Okay, I might have to revisit because <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> remember at all but i love this line everyone is a winner so far and i hope they keep it coming because i think there's like what 11 or 12 of the main people in the in the in the um in the mc group so i'm mm -hmm. i'm excited i love it i'm like keep coming i'll yeah, eat it i love my mc romance books but for some reason this month i'm keeping it kind of light and fluffy like my next book is like um it's If Only You Knew by Carla Fred, and I've never read anything by her before, but this book looks really interesting. So it's about, um, it's a contemporary African-American romance novel, mm -hmm. and the characters are Annie Mae Robinson, what a mouthful, <laughs> and, and Rick Jess is in there, like BFFs, and he like had this like really like difficult childhood like his father died in the military when he was like just a baby and the mother remarries and the stepfather doesn't like the son. So the mother drops him off with her abusive mother. And so like, he's like very anti-family. He thinks families are like no good. They don't do anything but hurt you. But his best friend has gotten the news that, you know, she has a fibroid issue and the doctors are like, you got to have a baby like as soon as possible. And because she's like a preacher's kid, she's like very traditional with her views on like having kids. So she must be married. So she propositions him like, you know, you're my best friend. I love you. Let's get married and have a baby. So there's a little talking to it. So they entered in this like marriage of convenience. And so I guess we'll get to see how they like work this relationship thing out amidst his feelings of, of love and family that he is just like totally against. This actually sounds pretty interesting. I'm down for that. Yeah. I, there's nothing I hate more than trifling mamas and grandmamas. And they right? like he had both of them. Both of them. How are you going to marry somebody with a child and not want the child? In my mind, I'm like, but you knew I had a child. You knew, right, from jump that the baby was there. And now you're like, find something to do with him? No, see, but that means that he's a no good man. But yes. hey, whatever. And she was no good either because she gave him to her no good mama. Who she knew was abusive. Right. I can't. I can't with people. All right, so my third book is more of a lighter fare. It is a shifter romance. I'm very excited. It's by 
Mary Janice Davidson. I haven't ha read one of her books recently, but this one has definitely caught my eye. It's called A Wolf After My Own Heart, a hilarious shape-shifting rom-com, which I'm all about because it's been a while since I've read a good, funny rom-com shift book that was by somebody other than Shelley Lawrenston, who's one of my favorite authors. Um, so this particular book is super sweet because we have, um, we have a, a male wolf shifter and he has been assigned to, or he volunteers to find a runaway bear cub that was recently orphaned in a plane crash, right? But this particular bear cub has taken refuge with a human who has become her guardian and, you know, is all about that life. So obviously now you have it where a case where this human is fiercely loyal to the bear cub, Sally. And, um, you know, now hilarity ensues because we have the male shifter whose name is Oz, which I find hilarious. Mm -hmm. And he is, you know, obviously feeling her, you know what I'm saying? He's thinking this is, you know, cute and whatever. And, um, you know, trying to protect the bear cub, trying to show, cause he's, oh, I forgot to mention, he's an accountant. So he's, he's noted as a nerdy shifter accountant with a bad boy side. <laughs> and I'm like, oh yes, I'm ready for this. Ready for this. So I'm really looking forward to it. Um, Mary Janice has definitely written some of, um, some of my favorite funny paperbacks from back in the day. I still have them on my bookshelf today. So I'm very mm -hmm. excited. Okay, I'll have to check that one out because you got to love a good, dependable bad boy. Exactly. <laughs> I'm not a bad boy with a stable job. <laughs> right. <laughs> Who's not going to jail? <laughs> Who I ain't got to worry about being a good liar for? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Who ain't got to keep secrets? <laughs> and when you come home, all your stuff will still be <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Now tell us your last book, Kitty Boo. What are you excited about? I took it back. I have not read an historical romance novel by a new author in, oh my gosh, years. So the name of this book is The Duchess Deal, Girl Meets Duke by Tessa, Tessa Dan. Yes, by Tessa Dan. So again, it's a historical romance novel. And you have the Duke of Ashbury. He's coming back from the war at Waterloo. And like, he's completely scarred. Like half of his face has been badly burned. Half of his upper body has been badly burned. And so he has the injuries from that. He's like very like stiff in his movement. And add on to that, like he was huge to begin with as far as like height wise goes. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like um, an interesting take on like a beauty and the beast type thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So the Duke is badly injured and he had a fiance before he went off to war, before he was injured. But because of the injuries, that kind of like fell through. But, you know, the planning for the wedding had already like started taking place. So, you know, in walks um, Emma Gladstone, a seamstress who is a daughter of a Viker. And like her father had put her out of the house because he caught her in a compromising position. So she made the dress for the fiance of the Duke. And so she appears at his castle demanding to be paid because she's about to get put out of her apartment if she doesn't mm -hmm. give him some money. And so the Duke is like, huh, you're interesting. You're not afraid of me. <laughs> Make a good wife. <laughs> He's like, let's get married. <laughs> And she's like, why are you messing? Why are you, why are you doing this? I'm a seamstress. The Duke can't marry a seamstress. How would that look? So, you know, they kind of enter this like, you know, dance. Like he has his rules. Like, you know, they can't kiss. They'll only be man and wife at nighttime. And as soon as she has a baby, like she has to retire to the country with the kid. And then, she, and she's like, you know, she has her rules. If she agrees, they have to have dinner together every night. There will be kissing. And, you know, she kind of eventually, I guess she'll see that he's not so bad underneath. And mind you, at the same time, he's like terrifying England at night by walking around 
And because of the way he looks and he keeps like beating up on, on like the footpads and the villains in the story, like the papers start putting all these stories out that, you know, London is being haunted by this monster <laughs> and people are being attacked. <laughs> so I'm very interested to see how this works out in this story. I haven't read a historical romance. I don't right. Know, talk about how long it's been. But you know, there's some on my bookshelf that I love to this day. I might have to bust out and smell paper. Oh, I reread <laughs> all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I reread the ones that I have read in the past over and over. I just haven't read a new one or a new historical romance author in a very long mm-hmm. time. I mean, I as I look to the right right now, it's like Judith McNutt, are you calling my name? Right. <laughs> I'm looking at the books right now. I was like, hold on, hold on one second. Oh yeah, I have quite a few Judiths and and Jude Devereux. Is that how you pronounce it? Devereux? Devereux. Quality. Like when you have such good, 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 I mean. I know, if I ever strike the lottery, I, I, I think I need a lady's maid. <laughs> Joanne Lindsay. Let's not forget Joanne Lindsay. In a while. As I look at my book. Once Upon a Princess. <laughs> I know, right? Quite a few quality. All right, guys. Well, that is our book haul for the month of February. As I said in the top of the video, please let us know any books you're excited about coming out. I mean, February, as I said, is the, the month of love, the month of great reads, the month of romance. So, Right? I need to get some chocolate strawberries to go with these reads. <laughs> Chocolate strawberries, some dipping chocolate, however you want to do it. Fresh strawberry. Now, what you do is you melt that dipping chocolate and then you wow. just dip the strawberries in them one by the time. Like, so then it's all fresh and nice. That's how you got to It's cheaper too. Because I think a dipping chocolate is like, so. <laughs> and some strawberries is $1.99, $2.99. And you can get a whole lot of chocolate covered strawberries for that price. Strawberries are better when you get them from those companies that specialize in the chocolate dip strawberries. That's true. Like, where did you get these strawberries during this season? They flew them in. That's why they cost so much. Right. That's like when you get some fish flown in. Who child be paying $17 a pound for some flown in snapper that's never been frozen? It hurts me. But it tastes so good. Where'd you, you must, you know. Fish I, not cry about it every time, but it'd be so good. Fish be big, too. They be like, hey, do you guys have any one-pounders? Nope. Small of we guys, two and a half pounds. Fish be like this big. I wonder if I can get that delivered to my house. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta cut it in three. I should be able to do that. I'm gonna check that out. I do know there's like some salmon delivery companies, too, that deliver fresh Alaskan salmon as well. Which is that wild caught goodness? So I know there are lobster crab companies that do that too. So I mean, I should be able to get some snapper. Mm-hmm. How you gonna cook it? Wait, this is a whole nother video. Anyway, guys, let Sorry, guys. let's <laughs> let you know because otherwise you hear us here planning our Friday, our our February meals out here. So talk to you guys soon and look out for our next video. See you later. Bye.